today in our 2018 GMC Sierra 2500, we're going to be taking a look at the SMI Air Force One Supplemental Braking System for motorhomes with air brakes, part number SM99243. Now the Air Force One is going to be a proportional braking system and it's going to take the air pressure from your motorhome's air brakes and apply it to the towed vehicle's brakes so it's going to match up perfectly. Now if we just tap our brakes in our coach, it's going to slightly apply them to the car. Now when I apply the brakes in my motorhome, I do have an indicator that's mounted in the towed vehicle and then it'll go out when I release the brakes. Now on the operating unit itself, we're going to have a vacuum port here on the end and it is labeled and then on the side we're going to have the exhaust port. Now in our particular application our Sierra does not have a vacuum brake booster that we would normally tie into. It has a hydro boost which is going to work out the power steering rather than a vacuum system. So it is going to be slightly different and I'd like to go over that and show you how we're going to hook this up. Now the three pieces we're going to be looking for is going to be this acorn style nut this black plug and then there's a very small cone shaped rubber piece that's in the same bag as these other two pieces. Now that little tiny rubber piece is very important. You don't want to overlook it and you don't want to throw it away. So we're going to take that little rubber cone piece and we're going to take the thin side and put it into the exhaust port over here and we're going to loosely thread it in place. Now once you get it on there hand tight come back with a 5 16 wrench and just make sure it's nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten it. You can grab the vacuum hose that they do provide in your kit. Now you're going to want to grab a tubing cutter and make the cut as straight as you can. And you're going to want to cut about a two inch section, give or take. We're going to cut that vacuum hose and then we're going to put it right onto the port that's on our control box here. With that in place, we can take our plug and we're going to insert it into the end of the vacuum hose. It's going to be a tight fit, but you want to make sure you get that plug in all the way. Now on our Sierra, we have adjustable pedals. Now special attention needs to be put before we get to mounting our cylinder on the brake pedal. Now we have two different options here. We can either bring our pedals all the way out to where they're going to be closest to the driver's seat and farthest away from the firewall, or we can set them where we want and disable the adjustable pedals. Now the reason being is, is that there's going to be a cable that's running mounting to the cylinder and we want to make sure that at the farthest point we have enough slack and it doesn't pull on that cable. But if we did adjust them in, it's not going to affect normal driving because it's just going to bring a little bit of slack to that cable. So the cylinder here, I already have it installed. It's just going to be a clamp that's going to go around the brake pedal arm itself. You just want to make sure that it's high enough that it's not going to interfere with normal driving. But keep in mind, the lower the cylinder is mounted, the more leverage it's going to have. Now, if we look back towards the firewall, there's going to be an anchor point attached to the cable and that's just going to go in using a self-tapping screw. Now the position of that anchor point is important. You want to go in line with the cylinder and maybe an, about an inch lower so that when the pedal is depressed it's nice and in line and it's pulling straight out of the back of the cylinder. There is an adjustment screw on the anchor point and it's going to be a 5 30 seconds Allen and you want to adjust that to where you only have about a quarter inch of slack once you have everything mounted up like we have here. Now the easiest way to check that is you can grab the cylinder and move it back and forth just a little bit. And you do need to screw it directly into the metal on the firewall. So as you can see, we did cut away a little bit of the insulation, just enough so we can have a nice solid contact point and the cable itself is not gonna be rubbing either. Now once you have your cable and the cylinder in the position that you want it, go ahead and take, come back with a 3A socket and we're gonna alternate tightening down these nuts until that clamp that's going around the brake pedal arm is just going to bow slightly. You don't want to over tighten them. You just want to have it bend a little bit. That way it has a nice firm grip on it. We chose to mount our operating unit right on top of our fuse box cover. 
just drill a small hole and cut a small notch out of the side here and we're going to zip tie through and zip tie it to the end of the handles on our operating unit and that way it'll be right on top of the cover and it won't interfere with anything. Our kit is going to come with an indicator light letting us know when the brakes are being applied so we can look in the rear view camera on our motorhome and see because we're going to be sticking the light right on the back of our rear view mirror in our truck. On the back of the light there's just going to be some protective tape that's covering up the double sided tape on there. You're just going to want to remove it and you're going to want to make sure that your mirror or whatever other surface you're mounting it to is nice and clean. And then we should be able to just make sure you're not blocking any kind of sensors we should just be able to stick it to the mirror and we're actually going to be pointing the wire going up because we're actually going to tuck it up behind the headliner here and we're going to route it back down towards the brake pedal because we're going to have to meet up with a couple wires that are at the air cylinder now another trick is if you want to hide the wires as much as possible if you just pull down on this plastic panel right here we can take this center section out we can actually tuck the wire behind in here and then follow our headliner across. So you want to make sure that that sticky tape doesn't come off when you start pulling the wire over. Just clip everything back in and then we'll only have that little bit of the wire sticking out right behind the mirror here. Now when you're running your wire, you're just going to want to pull on the headliner slightly and tuck that wire underneath. Just going to take a little bit of patience because the headliner are a little bit tight, but just run it over. And then we're going to run it down the pillar and down the side panel there. So I have my wires dropped down right by my emergency brake pedal. And the wires that we're going to need to meet up with, it's going to be the wires coming off of the reed switch, which is going to attach directly to our cylinder. And line it up. And push it into place and it's just going to sit there just like that. Now the color codes for how we're going to connect our wires. Off the reed switch, the blue wire is going to go to the black wire. But we're also going to have to have it grounded separately as well. And then the black wire coming off of the reed switch is going to go to the red wire on the monitor light. And then we should have one more brown wire left on the reed switch and that's going to go out through the firewall to the engine bay and it's going to be going to the positive post of our battery with the fuse holder installed. But we'll focus on our black and blue wires off the reed switch right now. So we're going to pull our reed switch out while we're working with our wires, making it a little bit easier to work with and that way we know that we got enough room and a little bit more working room. So we'll start with our red and black wire. And we can take the buck connectors that they provide us in our kit. And since the wires are so small, we're going to leave the ends that are on our wire on there. We're just going to crimp them in place. And take our reed switch and find the black wire and crimp that in place. Now for our black and blue, it is going to be a little bit different since I said that we're going to have to ground that as well. So we're going to take another one of our blue buck connectors and crimp it onto the blue wire. And then we're going to grab the included wire that they give us in our kit. We're going to have a black wire. It's going to be plenty length, but we can strip back the end of that. And we're going to attach it to the black wire that's coming from our indicator light. Just going to twist it together and then we can take our buck connector and we're going to crimp both of those wires into one end. So our black and blue wires are together, but now we have a separate wire coming off. So we're gonna find a good grounding point for this. So typically there's a ground right below this threshold panel right here, just to the outside of the emergency brake pedal. But we don't have one, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we have enough wire. We're gonna estimate, so we can go ahead and put our reed switch loosely in place, just to give us an idea of how much wire we're going to need. Make sure that we can tie everything up. And then we're going to take that excess black wire. And then we can take the included ring terminal that's in our kit and we can crimp it onto the end of the black wire. And then you can grab yourself a self tapping screw. And again, we're just going to be drilling it right into the sheet metal right here. 
it'll be behind that panel. We got enough wire to tuck everything away so we don't have to worry about it interfering with anything. So we should have one more wire left, which is gonna be our brown wire. We can take another one of our buck connectors, slide it over the end, and crimp it down. Now on the other end of this butt connector, we're gonna grab the length of brown wire they include in our kit, and we're gonna strip back the end of it and crimp it down. Now our brown wire is actually gonna to have to go out to the battery going through the firewall and the engine compartment. Now the easiest way to get to the engine compartment is actually if we start there, and I'll show you what grommet we're gonna use. Now this is gonna be a little bit hard to see, but if we're all the way at the firewall on the very corner on the driver's side, if you look behind all the electronics, there's gonna be a rubber grommet with a large wire loom going through it, and I already have an airline tube going through there. Now you can use a coat hanger or whatever you have available to get it through, but I will let you know, you are gonna to have to try to get it through. There's two layers. You're gonna have the layer outside here and then a layer on the inside. And the easiest way to get it through is if you take a flathead screwdriver and just poke one end and push it all the way through to the other side. You just wanna be mindful that there are wires in there and you don't wanna damage them. Now, unfortunately, the grommet on the inside is gonna be behind the fuse panel. So we actually took the three 10 millimeter bolts off that it's holding in place you're gonna have two on the bottom and one on the top right hand side. Went ahead and removed them so we had a little bit of wiggle room to move that fuse panel around and pull our airline tube out. So we can take our brown wire and I'm actually gonna put it through my airline tube a little bit. Now before we send this through, we wanna make sure that we're sending everything through the firewall that we need to so we're not going back and forth because of how difficult it is to go through in the first place. Another component that will need to go through the firewall is gonna be the airline tube that's gonna hook up to our air actuator that's on the brake pedal arm. Now they give you plenty of airline in the kit, so I'm actually just gonna take the end of the airline tube and I'm gonna run it through and I'm gonna tape it to my existing airline tube and that wire. That way I don't have to worry about losing it when I start pulling it through the firewall there. Just wanna make sure it's nice and secure because you don't wanna to have to fight trying to get that tube back through to pull everything out. Now you want to be careful when you're pulling it through. You want to make sure it doesn't get snagged. So if you start feeling a lot of tension, you might want to go on the inside and double check and make sure that it's not getting stuck and you're not going to lose everything you're trying to feed through. And if you can reach your hand and kind of help guide it through the grommet, that's always a good idea too. And once you have some of it through, you can grab the chunk of it and start pulling it through till all the wire's through. But you're gonna only wanna pull enough air line to reach the air out port, and we can trim that down on the inside a little bit later. So our airline tube coming from the inside that's gonna connect to our air actuator on our brake pedal arm is gonna go to the air out port, which is gonna be the one that's farthest away from the vacuum hose. And when you put these in, just gonna take your airline tube, it'll feed right in, and you wanna push it until it bottoms out, and give it a quick tug to make sure it's locked in place. So before we hook up our brown wire, we're gonna have to run our breakaway switch because it is gonna tap into that as well. So we mounted our breakaway switch right here in the opening right below our grill, and we just drilled a small hole through the plastic and then put our hardware in place. Now we're gonna run our wires up through the grill up towards the battery. So we went ahead and removed all the pushpin fasteners that's holding this grill cover in place. That way, it made it a lot easier for us to reach down and grab the wires. So you wanna pull all the pushpin fasteners out along the back edge here, as well as on the front edge here. And then we can lift up the cover. I'm just gonna set it back for right now. And then we can actually look down and we can see where our breakaway switch wires are. So we can just start feeding the wires up slightly until we have enough room that we can reach down through the grill and grab them. Just pull all the excess slack up and we can start routing them around the support here and start going towards our brown wire and the battery over towards the engine. Just wanna make sure you don't rub against anything sharp or the radiator and condenser because those will get a little bit hot. 
So you want to stay as far away from those as you can. Put a couple zip ties back there so we keep everything nice and secure. Now to help hide the wires behind the grill here and also protect them, I'm going to take a little bit of wire loom. Now this isn't in our kit, but you can pick some up on our website. Or you can actually just wrap the entire length of wire with some electrical tape. You just want to leave yourself a little bit of room here so that you have room to work with the wires at the end. I'm going to slide it on and then we can secure it with a couple zip ties once we get it in place. To help the loom from sliding around, I just put a little bit of electrical tape around it and the two wires. And then down below on the grill support, I put a zip tie so it'll hold it nice and tight and keep it in place. And that loom not only is going to help protect the wire, but it's also going to make it so we're not seeing those bright blue and orange wires behind our grill. We're just going to have that black, which is going to blend in nicely. Now, since our wires are going to be connected under the hood, they may not be exposed to a lot of the elements, but they are definitely going to be exposed more to than the ones on the inside. So we're going to be replacing the buck connectors that are in our kit with some heat shrink buck connectors. So we're going to start with our orange and black wire coming off our breakaway switch, and we're going to be connecting it along with our brown wire. So we can start routing our brown wire in a general loose area towards it, making it a little bit easier to connect to it. And we make sure we give ourselves plenty of room so we can tuck everything away later. Cut the end off and strip back both ends of the orange and brown wire. Now we're gonna twist the two ends together. We're gonna take one of those heat shrink buck connectors and put it on one end of these two wires. Now the other end of this buck connector, we're going to be putting in our fuse holder. Now it is just one big loop, so we're going to go ahead and cut that in half and strip back both ends of the wire. And then we can take one end and we're going to crimp it into the buck connector. Now I'm using a heat gun to shrink down the connector. Now if you are using an open flame, I just want to mention you want to be extra careful not to ch char or burn the connector or the wires themselves. On the other end of our fuse holder, we can grab another one of our ring terminals from our kit. We're going to slide it onto the stripped end and crimp it in place. Now this is going to have to go to the positive post on the battery. So we can go ahead and come to the cover right here on the battery. We're going to lift it up. And we can pop it off. And we'll see that we're going to have two posts that we can go to. Now, the one over here is going to be the easiest to go to because it's going to have access right here for the wire to come out, so we're not going to have to do any modifications. So you're going to want to grab a 14 millimeter socket and remove that nut. Then we can take our ring terminal and we're going to slide it over the post, but as you can see, it's not going to be able to fit. So there is a trick that you can do. You can take a pair of cutters and we're actually just going to cut a section out of the ring terminal so it's more of a Y shape instead of a ring. And then we'll be able to slide it around the post once we have enough cut off. Just wanna make sure you have enough that still makes contact and it's gonna be a good clean connection point. So we'll go around the post rather than fully going around it and then we can take that nut and reinstall it. Again, you just wanna make sure that that ring terminal is pushed in as far as you can get it against the post so it makes a good clean contact. So now we can pay attention to our blue wire. We're going to go ahead and strip back the end and grab another one of those buck connectors. Then we can crimp it in place. And our blue wire is going to be attaching to one of the black wires coming off of our operating unit. Now we're going to have two wires coming out of the operating unit. It doesn't matter which one you grab, you're just going to want to grab one of the black wires and we're going to strip back the end of that as well. Now since this is a rather thin wire, I'm actually going to strip back a decent amount and then fold the wire over on itself. That way the buck connector has a little bit more to grab onto. Just fold it up a couple times and then it'll keep us from having to grab a whole bunch of different sizes of buck connectors. So then we're going to route it towards our buck connector. We're just going to leave it kind of loose for right now. We put in the end of the buck connector and crimp it down. The other black wire coming off our operating unit is going to be going to a ground. So we go ahead and strip back the wire and we're going to grab one last ring terminal and crimp it in place. And the easiest spot for us to go to 
is gonna be directly on the negative side of the battery here. We're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket and remove the nut right here. You're gonna find that you're not gonna be able to remove the nut all the way, and that's because it is for the clamp that's holding down our terminal here. So just like we did with the other one, we're gonna cut our ring terminal so we can slide it around the post. And this way we don't have to worry about damaging the battery post or the clamp, and we just sneak our ring terminal right underneath the nut and we can get our ground. And then we can tighten down that nut. So now if we move back to the inside, we have our airline hooked up and all the wires underneath the hood, we can go and hook up our airline tube directly to our brake actuator. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have enough slack we can cut our airline, giving ourselves a little bit of room. And again, you're gonna to wanna to be using a tubing cutter because you want a nice straight cut. So we're gonna take our airline and we're gonna push it directly into the fitting that's at the end of the actuator. And again, you wanna make sure that it bottoms out all the way and then give it a quick tug to make sure it locks into place. So we can get ready to put our reed switch back into place. Now when we do, you just wanna make sure that the letters and numbers that are on there are facing out and you'll see it has a tiny little set screw at the end here. Now if your reed switch is sliding in and moving around and it very easily doesn't sit there, you're gonna to need to adjust that set screw. So you're gonna grab a very small flathead screwdriver and tighten it up with it in there until it's nice and snug. Now we're gonna have one more port on our operating unit that we're gonna to have to connect and it's gonna be the air in port. Now we're gonna take the excess airline tube that we had, and we're gonna be running it from the air in port to the front of our truck where we put that adapter in place. Now it's probably gonna be easier to start at the front and work our way up to the engine bay and make our final connection here. So on the back of our air adapter bracket here, we're gonna have that same quarter inch fitting. So we can take our airline, take one end, and we're gonna push it in until it bottoms out, and again, it's always a good idea to give it a quick tug to make sure it locked into place. We're gonna route this the same way we did with our breakaway switch, right behind the grill and coming up into the engine bay. So you wanna make sure you give yourself enough slack so that you not only can get to the port, but that you can route it and clean it up later if you'd want to. So we can take our tubing cutter again we cut our airline tube. You're gonna push the airline tube into the fitting. You're gonna make sure that it bottoms all the way out and then give it a quick tug to make sure it locks in. With all the connections made, we can go and open up our fuse holder and take the provided 10 amp fuse and put it in place. And with the fuse in, we're gonna go ahead and test our indicator light and make sure that it's adjusted properly. Now, if our brake actuator is adjusted properly along with the switch on there, the light should be off when nobody's pushing on the pedal. Now, if I push on the pedal slightly and pull out on the cylinder, about an eighth of an inch, you'll notice the light is coming on. That's exactly what we want. We just want a slight push on the pedal, and then if you pull on the cylinder to pull that slack out of the cable, the light will come on. Now that we have all our connections made and we know that our brake actuator and switch is adjusted properly and we know that everything's working we can take some time clean up all of our wires make sure everything looks nice put all the panels back in place as well so if we come to our back drive axle we're going to have a tag axle right behind that the valve we're going to get to is going to be right underneath in between the two of them so we're right above the tag axle here just right behind the rear drive axle and you'll notice we'll have the two valves and our main valve right above it. Now we're going to tap into the supply line. So if we come to our valve, we're going to notice that it has this black circle right in the middle. If we come directly back from it, at the bottom here we're going to have this rather large 5 8 diameter air hose. It's going to be a green hose. That's going to be our supply line. Now we're also going to have to tap into the metered air and in this case, we don't have a 3 8 air line coming off. But if we come to the top of the valve, we're gonna have this plug right here that we're gonna have to unthread. 
and our kit does come with a new fitting to put it in its place. Now before you cut your air lines, you want to make sure that you get as much of the air out of the system as you can. So always make sure that you have your parking brake set and the wheels chalked. Once you do, you can move into the inside and you should start pumping that brake pedal until no more air is releasing. Now, as long as you don't start the motor home up, there should be little to no air in the tanks and we're not gonna have to worry about cutting the line and debris flying everywhere. Now, in order to take that plug out, we're gonna wanna grab a 5 16 Allen bit and we're gonna just unthread it. Now we're not going to be reinstalling this because our kit is going to come with a new replacement that's going to have a fitting on the end for our air hose. Now the new fitting in our kit is going to have the same thread that the factory one did as well as a quarter, quarter inch push fitting on the other side. Now it already has Teflon tape pre-installed so we're just going to thread it into place. We're going to get it started by hand and then once we get it nice and snug we can come back we're going to grab an 11 16 socket or wrench and snug it up. Now you want to make sure you get as many threads as possible inside and you make sure that Teflon tape is engaging. Now the 5 8 air line that we're going to have to tap into, you're going to want to make sure that you cut this as straight as possible so there's no leaks at the end of our fittings. So you're going to want to grab a tubing cutter and you're just going to cut that air line directly in half. And in here there's still a little bit of air, but that beats a whole lot of air, like 150 PSI coming out right when we cut it. Now our kit also comes with a T. It's going to have two 5 ace fittings on each end. And then in the middle, it's going to have another one of those quarter inch push fittings. So we're just going to take our T and we're going to push it on to each side of our air line. Give it a nice tug to make sure it locks in. And push in on both sides. Now we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we can access that quarter inch push fitting still. With all of our plumbing tapped into, we're gonna to have to find a spot to mount the tank and the valve. Now they do provide us with some hardware. Just gonna be some 3 8 bolts, washers, and lock nuts. And on the tank mounting bracket, we are gonna have four spots available that are slotted so we're going to have a lot of leeway of where we're going to mount it. Now before we get under there and mount it, I kind of want to go over where the hoses are going to go because it is a little bit limited on space and lighting. Now on the end of the tank here, where we have this black circle and a quarter inch push fitting, this is going to go in between where that supply line with the big 5 ace T is and we're going to connect an air hose from that quarter inch push fitting to right here. We're going to be installing the quarter inch air line to this fitting and that's going to go from that fitting that we installed at the bottom of the valve underneath the motorhome to right here. Now there is one more fitting at the very bottom of the valve. Now this is going to go out to the back of the motorhome. We're going to be mounting another bracket and fitting just like we did on the front of our truck. And this is that fitting I was talking about. This is going to be the connection point in between our truck and our motorhome. So we can move back underneath our motorhome and find a good spot to mount our valve. So right above the transmission, we're gonna have this cross member that's gonna have lots of holes already pre-drilled. So this is gonna be a good spot to mount our tank. Now when we do mount our tank, the only thing you need to pay attention to, at the very bottom of the valve, we'll notice that it has this rubber seal. This seal has to be facing down or to the side. We cannot mount this upside down. So you can mount it like this or sideways. So we're going to find a few holes that line up with our bracket and use the hardware to secure it in place. So we did find two holes that line up with our valve here, mounting it sideways. And we're going to come back with a 9 16 wrench and socket and tighten them up. So now we can go back to our plumbing connections that we made earlier and start running our lines. So we're going to grab our airline tube and we'll start with the fitting at the very top. And again, you wanna push it in, make sure it bottoms out, and then give it a quick tug to make sure that it's locked in. And we can start rounding this back to the T where our five ace lines are connected. So now that we have our airline right by our T, 
We're going to go ahead and make sure we have enough. And again, using a tubing cutter, because you want that cut to be nice and straight so we don't get any leaks, we're going to cut our airline tube. And then we can take it, and just like the other push fittings, we're going to push it in until it bottoms out and give it a quick tug to make sure it locks. And since we're back here, we're going to go ahead and plug into our metered air connection, which is going to be that fitting that we put into the bottom of the valve. So just push our air line in. And now we're going to route this back to the tank and valve that we just mounted. So now we're going to do the same thing. Take a pair of tubing cutters. Make sure you give yourself enough room to reach the fitting, but we're going to go ahead and cut the air line. And we're going to push it into that fitting that's right in between the tank and the valve itself. Now on the very bottom of the valve, we're going to take our air line. We're going to push it in, make sure it locks in. And this time we're going to route this air line to the very back of our motor home. I just want to mention you want to stay away from the exhaust and try to run it along the frame. So that way we won't have any damage to the air line tube itself. So we had our air line come out right by our receiver hitch here. Now we're gonna to need to mount that adapter fitting to the back of our motor home. Now we're gonna mount ours right here at the top, right above our receiver hitch, so it's easily accessible. So we can take our bracket, and we're just gonna line it up about where we want it. We've got plenty of room back here, so maybe tuck it back a little bit. You wanna make sure that there's nothing on the underside of that that would interfere with us mounting it there. And then we're gonna mark the holes and we're gonna to need to drill them out. Now I'm gonna come back with a quarter inch drill bit and drill out where I marked because the hardware is gonna be quarter inch hardware. So now we can take our quarter inch bolts and I'm gonna slide them up to the bottom side of our bracket and feed them into the holes. And then we're gonna come back with a quarter inch flat washer and a quarter inch lock washer and tighten them up. And we're gonna come back with a 7 16 wrench and socket and snug up the hardware. Now that we have our bracket mounted, we can take our airline tube. And I always like to give myself a little bit of extra. We'll go ahead and cut it with that tubing cutter again. I'm going to take the end of our airline and we're going to be putting it into the fitting that's at the back of the bracket. With all the connections made on our motorhome, we're going to want to start it back up, let it air up to full pressure, and then we're going to go back underneath and check all of our connections that we made for any leaks. So we're going to spray all the fittings that we made connections at and the T as well as the valve itself, and we're going to be looking for some bubbles to be creating and be expanding. Now the little bubbles from the soap, like you see on the airline hose there, are okay. But we're looking for those big bubbles that look like that they're being blown bigger and bigger because that's gonna be an air leak making the soap expand. So we wanna check all the connections we made at that valve as well as the valve that we mounted. And then I'll finish up your look at the SMI Air Force One Supplemental Braking System for motorhomes with air brakes, part number SM99 243 on our 2018 GMC Sierra 2500.